I'm starting off this first project with some tissue paper to make an inner layer for the clay. This way the clay will have something to be formed onto. So I'm going to roll this up and twist it to make it a little bit more dense and tape it together with some masking tape. We will need two of these, both the same length, and you can adjust the thickness of the paper according to how chunky you want it to be. For the second piece, I'm not taping it just yet since we will be linking the two together. With the clay, I'm going to start by taking out a slab and I'm just giving the clay a massage to make it more malleable. This is air dry clay, which I find quite easy to work with and the packet that I've opened is 500 grams. For this project, I'll be using a pack and a half, so make sure to have some extra air dry clay available. I'm just pushing the clay gently with the palm of my hands in order to get out any air bubbles before I begin rolling out the clay. So I am just using a baking pin to roll out the clay and I'm trying to get it to an even thickness all around. But I want this to be a relatively long slab since we will be covering the paper lengthwise. And I like to roll in small motions. I find this a lot easier to do as well as it keeps the clay from sticking to the rolling pin. Then I'm taking out a plastic scraper, but you can use anything with a sharp straight edge and I'm just cutting out a straight line. This helps get rid of any of the excess clay. Afterwards, it's time to add our twisted paper to the clay. You have to make sure that the clay is firm and thick enough to hold its shape and then just roll the paper with the clay and push down with light pressure to sculpt the clay around the paper. So here I am just using my thumb and forefinger to press the clay together and using my palm to sort of guide the shape of the clay. If you have some excess clay like what I have here, go ahead and cut it off and we will use these pieces later so just set them aside. This usually will take a few minutes to make your donut shape. If you feel that the clay is too dry, it's okay to add a little water, but don't soak it since excess use of water will cause your clay to crack while drying. It's also good if you can still feel a little extra give while you're molding the clay because air dried clay tightens as it dries and having that extra space on the inside will keep it from cracking. To combine the ends, I took my plastic scraper and gently pushed on the clay. This gives a bit of friction to make sure that both sides stick together and later I can go back and just smoothen things out with a bit of water. Some troubleshooting here, if your clay is too short in the center to combine, take some of that excess clay that you had cut off and use it to fill the center gap. If you have clay tools, you can use the comb to make small slits in the clay in order to combine it together. But if not, you can do what I'm doing here, which is just pinching the clay and using a bit of water to help it all stick together. Then in order to get that smooth, more polished finish, I'm going to use again my plastic scraper and dip that into water to make it glide over the clay smoothly to sort of get rid of any rough edges. And I'm just going to repeat this process up until I'm happy with how the way the first link looks. Don't worry about getting it super perfect because we can always sand out the imperfections, but getting it to a state where it looks pretty smooth without requiring a lot of sanding is what we're aiming for. Also guys, when you're working with air dry clay, it does tend to get a bit messy when you add water. So always wear an apron just to protect your clothes. And I am working on top of a tea towel in order to contain the mess, but just having a silicone baking mat or a large tile will help make rolling out the clay a lot easier and smoother. So after the first piece is finished, we can set it aside to let it dry and begin working on the second link. I'm getting out some air dry clay again and combining it with the extra leftover clay that we had and massaging everything together to make sure that the two clays are the same consistency. This just makes it easier to work with and not crack as well later on. Then it's just repeating the same process of kneading the clay, then using a rolling pin to roll it out smoothly. You want to make sure that the clay is not super thin so it can hold its shape, but I don't like very thick clays as well with air dry clay because the thicker the clay, the more it is prone to cracking while drying. A good thickness would be approximately half a centimeter thick. 
Then I found my X-Acto knife, which is much easier to use to cut the clay into a long rectangular shape. We will loop the second piece of clay and paper through the first clay link. By this time, hopefully that first piece has started to harden a little bit and won't fall apart even with a little bit of rough handling. So I'm just repeating the process of taping together the paper to make a loop and taping it off. In order to make the whole process a little easier, I decided to divide the clay into two. You don't have to do this, but I find that handling the clay in two pieces allows me to shape the clay more evenly without getting in the way of the first already completed link. Another troubleshooting hack, if the clay is too short or you run out, just combine another piece on top, but make sure to pinch everything together or make comb marks or slits and add a bit of water to strengthen the adhesion between clay pieces. Here, I'm using my clay tools to do exactly that. And if you are thinking of doing a lot of clay projects, it's great to pick up a set of these plastic clay tools because they are quite inexpensive and they make life so much easier. I'll try to link some that you can get from Amazon in the description box. Then lastly, I'm using the smoothing tool to smoothen out the clay. Again, just dipping it in water before applying with gentle pressure will help erase all of those unsightly bumps and lines from using the previous tool. Once everything is done, just let it dry for a day or two before the next step. I've given it the weekend to dry and now I can sort of see some of the imperfections. So these can easily be removed by sanding down with some sandpaper. I'm going to use 220 grit here, which is pretty fine already, but if you have a very rough finish, you can start with a lower grit and make your way up to a fine grit to polish out any imperfections. Although for this project, I wanted kind of a rustic look, so I'm okay with the links not being perfectly round. Actually, I think when you're working with air dry clay, you have to sort of accept that there are going to be some imperfections and it's not going to look like a piece of marble or something that's really store-bought. So it's still going to have that handmade charm. Anyways, the next thing to decide on is the paint color or if it is to your liking, just leave it white. Actually, air dry clay dries very white, even though when it was wet or when we were molding it, it was more of a cream color. So I am going to add a bit of color using a paintbrush and some watered down brown paint to add speckles to the link. I don't want anything too crazy. I'm going for more of a monochromatic look just to add some texture without really changing the overall color. So I'm going to let this dry before sealing it off with a clear coat of spray paint. The spray paint is going to make it slightly more yellow and I've read that if you don't want a color change, the other way to do this would be to coat it first with Mod Podge, but I don't have any on hand and I'm not really a fan of painting and waiting for things to dry, so I am taking the easier option here. Now that's pretty much the final product. If you need some inspiration on how to style the chain links, check out some of these photos from Pinterest and Instagram. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. I've enjoyed making it definitely different from my other videos. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these sort of DIY projects and home improvements. Also, if you aren't already, please consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date with me. Thank you all for watching and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye.